Hi, welcome to this edition of Sojourners Along the Way. This program is dedicated to our veterans and also those who are presently serving our military. We also want to give a big thank you for your service, especially for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of their country. The program is a combination of Ohio University and Athens, Ohio, working together to put this program. And I am very grateful to the Ohio University Photography and Video Services because they gave Sojourners Along the Way permission to use their footage. So a big thank you to them. And another big thank you to Dave Edwards, senior of the Veterans Center. He was very helpful in getting me the information and also his participation in this program. There are going to be a number of voiceovers. You are seeing one right now. You can hear my voice, but you don't see me. And that will be implemented so you can see some of the construction of the wall that heals which is the topic of this particular program. And you may also participate through listening to three of the speeches that were given at the open, opening ceremony of The Wall That Heals when it was in Athens, Ohio. I had the opportunity to visit the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. It is an extremely moving I've never had any kind of statue, monument, whatever, impact me and affect me as when I was visiting the Vietnam Memorial. This particular, the wall that heals, is a replica of the one in Washington, D.C. It is half the size, but it does not have half of the impact it can still have a very, very powerful impact as you will witness while the speeches are being given, interviews were done, you'll see the people being hit very emotionally, especially those who did serve in our um, military. Please, we need to be respectful. They're doing a job that many others would never even consider doing. And yet, how were they treated? Especially our veterans who returned from Vietnam. I tell you, I was, when I learned of the things that happened, I was never so ashamed of my country as I was when I learned what happened to our Vietnam vets. Please. Let's become thankful and start saying thank you to our vets, thank you to those who are serving in the military. If you are not able to go to Washington, D.C., I highly recommend that you find where the wall that heals will be going and visit it. It's a very powerful, powerful experience. I do need to ask your forgiveness because there are times that I had to edit out some of the things because otherwise I was given so much footage and I wanted to use as much of it as possible. This program would have to be two hours long and that's not allowed. I'm restricted by television to only have one hour. So I did have to delete some things, but I tried to maintain it to the pauses, the ums and things like that. So I hope that this program will touch you in a very powerful way, in a very powerful way. This edition of Sojourners Along the Way will conclude with a salute to our fallen military personnel and also with a moment of silence given our fallen heroes the respect they never received. And the clip that this program concludes with is a double rainbow. It's a sign of hope for a better tomorrow. Hello, my name is David Edwards and I am the director of the Brigadier General James M. Abraham, Colonel Arlene F. Greenfield, Veterans and Military Student Services Center. Yes, that is a big title for the office, so normally when we talk to folks we just say we are the Veterans Center at Ohio University's main campus. 
Um, it, it is an absolute honor uh, for me to sit here and, and talk about the wall that heals. Um, having served in the Air Force for 26 years, um, learning about the wall, uh, thinking about uh, the little aspects of what I know that my dad did in Vietnam, it, it was just an absolute honor uh, for me to, to be a part of this. The Wall That Heals was a wonderful collaborative effort between the Veterans and Military Student Services Center, which I am the director of here at OU, and the Campus Involvement Center. We started this project about nine months ago, ten months ago, at the beginning of the year. And the, one of the individuals in the Campus Involvement Center came to our office and said, hey, would you like to go in on this and, and bring this back to the community because we haven't had the wall here since 2011. The one that was brought here back in 2011 was a smaller replica of what we had this past September. And that wall was actually located up on our fourth floor in Baker Center in the ballroom. Uh, it was a good turnout then, but six years had passed and we felt that it was the right time to bring the wall back to Athens County. And so our two offices started collaborating on it, but then we had the bigger picture in mind of not just making this a university event. So we solicited two veteran organizations to be a part of this committee to help us get the information out there, get volunteers. Uh, we had a motorcycle escort that brought it in on the, on the Wednesday before it was set up. And it was just wonderful working with the entire community to bring the wall heal, here to start that healing process that many of our Vietnam veterans still need to go through. And it was wonderful to hear from some of them how excited and how happy they were that the wall came to Athens because again, as I had, as I was conversing with them and kind of getting to know them just a little bit, they had mentioned that they still have some old wounds from that war. And so throughout the entire course of, of bringing it here, getting the logistics, uh, set up and finalized and work through, having it here for those three and a half days, seeing how much it meant to not only the veterans themselves, but family members of the veterans. It's, it's unspeakable. The joy, the, the sorrow, the healing, all, all the wonderful emotions that, that came from such a contentious war. Um, we had many family members that came during the day and at evening and they would find a family member or a friend and they would just be at the wall and, and they would just break down and, and cry. And it, even though it's a half-sized replica uh, from what is the one there in Washington, D.C., the fact that we brought it here and kind of like made it come alive, if you will, in, in a rural part of Ohio, again, as I had just mentioned, to bring the healing to many of our Vietnam veterans was, was just very, very powerful for all of us uh, to be involved. Another thing that we did was put several of our military uh, flags in the Walter Rotunda. So as our veterans came through, they could go into the Walter Rotunda and they can sign their name and dates of service on the branch of branch flag that they served in and and we're looking at hanging those up as as a memorial to all the people that came here and additionally we had sheets of paper that family members and friends could scribble a message to either somebody that they know that's serving or if they happen to have lost a, a friend or a loved one in the vietnam war they could pin a message to to that individual on the sheets of paper and again we're looking at hanging those up um, it, it was such a worthwhile event and it was unbelievable how fast it went. Uh, as we started looking at dates to bring the wall here, of course, the logical time to bring it was going to be around Veterans Day, which is wonderfully next month. However, the company that we went with, um, the same company who is in charge of the actual wall in D.C., was unable to come at that time because of other commitments. So we found a wonderful date in, in September, two weeks after school started, 
and we worked with athletics and got the home football game changed to parents weekend or that was parents weekend excuse me um and then we got with athletics and, and had that football game heroes day and so not only do we honor our veterans but we also honored our first responders and it was wonderful how that whole week just planned out so so perfectly and athletics was even able to get two f-18s as a flyover at the beginning of the football game something that we've never had here and and so to have this whole week uh, or that week culminate in such a huge event from an historical and emotional uh, point of view in in recognizing uh, our veterans thanking our veterans who served in vietnam because we still have quite a few of those here in athens county and we made sure that we thank them for their service but also honoring and thanking those that that wound up paying the ultimate sacrifice uh, if you asked any of us that worked there it, it was just a sense of joy and pride uh, we, we we wanted to kind of stay behind the scenes if you will we helped many folks find their friend or loved one that was on the wall and when we did that we just kind of backed away so they could spend the time that they needed to in in reflection and in remembrance and in talking with whoever was by them but let me share a story about you know my husband or my brother or, or my son whatever the case may be and it, it was just a wonderful time to see so many people come together begin that healing process and uh, just share with some of the staff stories um, having the trailer there that depicted some of the items from service members uh, that will wind up being in an actual museum there in Washington DC when they finally build it was also something that was very very special because we oftentimes kind of get separated from what we've read in the history books or see in movies we don't have anything that's tangible if you will and so seeing some of those actual articles from the Vietnam War was very very special as well and then to see one of the television screens that was devoted to showing the names of the individuals from our local area that had had served and, and paid the ultimate sacrifice was also something too in, in, in as i was standing there one day uh, there was a couple there uh, with some young kids and one of them asked would you remember so and so and it was neat that we were able to make a connection uh, in that fashion and then we had another television screen that showed all of the service members who happened to to die on that particular day it was their birthday and, and they would have turned whatever age on say September 14th which is the first day that we we had it so there was 160 or 170 uh, folks that were that was displayed on that television screen it, it was very very powerful and emotional for me as well um, not that I lost anybody. My dad served in Vietnam. I'm, I'm very lucky that he is still alive. But just knowing the emotional turmoil that many of the family members still have, again, because of such a contentious war, that was really the biggest reason that we brought the wall back here to Athens. We wanted to show Athens County that our veterans stand together. And we have many people on this campus that are very veteran friendly uh, thinking about our veterans and what can we do uh, to kind of bridge the campus community and the local community together it, this is just a wonderful avenue for us to do that and so from our office being involved in something so big and so powerful was just beyond anything that this office has done to date and we're already looking at doing the same thing in four years bringing it back so again we have that opportunity to reach our veterans uh, reach those family members show them that we support them show them that we love them show them that we thank them and it it is just um, one of the joys of my position is bringing some bridges to 
these two different communities because a lot of our veterans that are on this campus come here from another city in the state. And so helping them to make a connection not only on this campus but with the local community is something that we hold very dear uh, in, in our philosophy here in this office. Um, again, it, it was so powerful it was great working with the company they were very enthusiastic the volunteers that provided overwatch if you will 24 hours a day uh, from 6 o'clock a.m. on Thursday to about 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon was just phenomenal uh, the campus of Alma Center took all of the volunteers names and set them up in shifts and it was just wonderful to see the outpouring from the community and when I mean that I'm talking about the campus and the local community uh, we couldn't have asked for anything more and the way the volunteers handled themselves the way they helped uh, folks deal with the situation find the names on the wall uh, it, they performed well above our expectations and, and we are very very grateful for the community and what they did. So one of the biggest reasons why we brought the Wall That Heals here to Athens, Ohio was again to thank our living Vietnam veterans and to show that how much we appreciated what they did in a very contentious war. Uh, they sacrificed a, a lot for this country, especially during the 60s when the country was very tumultuous just within itself. Uh, it was not a popular war, and the aspects of what was shown over in Vietnam also played into the fire of how the public viewed the uh, military folks that were serving over there. And then when those folks came back, they were spat on, they were, they were mistreated, they were yelled at, they were, uh, had things thrown at them from, from a total humanistic point of view, it, it, there was a lot of disrespect to our veterans and it was also not a very popular war because it was instituted the draft and many of them were drafted to go to this war. They didn't choose to go. Um, they saw some very horrible things which many of them are still dealing with to this day. Um, I'm sure many of them created or uh, participated in atrocities that we can only imagine and those are things that they're dealing with as well they're probably not happy about what they did but they answered their nation's call and they many of them served with honor and distinction as a matter of fact President Trump just awarded uh, an, a man a medal of honor yesterday uh, October 25th uh, for his role that he played during Vietnam and, and so it was an opportunity for the local community to really come together and say thank you, we share your pain, we don't want you to live with this pain anymore, we're here to, to help in any way that we possibly can. Um, we want you to know that you are very much a, a valued member of this community and um, we thank you for what you did and you know we don't want you to, to ever or we don't want you to focus on how you were treated 40 plus years ago. We want you to think about how you were treated September of 2013 when we brought the wall at heels. We, you know, we celebrated who you are. Um, we celebrated um, what you've accomplished since then in making this community great, our state great, our country great. And um, we know it wasn't easy what you had to do uh, going over there sometimes uh, dro dropped into the heat of battle right off the bat, getting out of there, coming home, and fighting a whole different battle, uh, not with bullets and, and bombs and rockets, but with words and, and um, just being shunned. Uh, we're glad that we're not like that today. Uh, we have come a long way in understanding the Vietnam War, um, understanding what you are going through, uh, and what you've gone through in the last 40 plus years and uh, again we, we just thank you and, and we are very proud of who you are in our community. My name is Tim Tates. 
Can you tell us a little bit about your service? Uh, I was in the Coast Guard from 1990 to 1992 on active duty. Uh, the wall that heals is a half-scale replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So exactly half as tall, half as long, but it still has the 58,318 names. Uh, obviously has a very special tie to uh, uh, the University of Ohio campus in the fact that its designer, Maya Lin, uh, was a young uh, girl growing up here in Ohio and uh, her parents worked here. And so when she went away to Yale University, she came up with a design for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. And that was one of the magical things that uh, really culminated a four-year process to build a wall on the, on the uh, Capitol grounds in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1997, we recognized that not everyone could make it to Washington, D.C., and we fielded a, this half-scale replica. In doing so, we, it allows us to take the memorial to towns across the country. And this year, we have about 35 stops uh, from coast to coast where we'll be able to bring the wall home and give people, young and old, an opportunity to experience the healing and the power and the magic of the wall. Wednesdays are always a little bit frantic of a day. Uh, we started uh, about a half an hour outside of town and met 108 motorcycles. They escorted us in with the Ohio State Troopers and even as we got closer here, the campus police, and, and really had that home and coming parade that veterans don't get anymore. You know, at the end of World War II, we had ticker tape parades and celebrated the end of uh, the war in Europe and Victory Japan Day. But we didn't have that after that. And so those veterans, whether they were Persian Gulf, Iraqi Freedom, or Vietnam veterans, finally had that opportunity to have a welcome home parade and, and roar into town saying, hey, this is uh, something special that's happening here in Athens. You know, obviously there's a special tie to Ohio University with the Myelin's uh, heritage and legacy here. It was a natural fit there. Uh, the Midwest is special for us, and really Athens is a great town. So even if uh, the university wasn't on it, um, we would certainly be interested because it's a great size community. But in addition, we're, we have a partnership with the PBS uh, this year. And PBS is a, a tie to this because this Sunday, the Ken Burns special is going to come out. And for 10 nights, 18 hours, uh, America is going to really talk about Vietnam and really have a discussion and a dialogue in ways that we never did. And I think that that's going to be the magic that you get to have. You know, first thing I want them to realize that it's open 24 hours a day. So whether they're willing to come down here in the daytime or they want to come down in the evening, you know, they need to come experience that. Secondly, I hope that they come down and they experience the magic and the healing that happens here. They hear from someone who served in Vietnam or they remember and are able to look at the pictures of the folks from the local county and recognize ways that we honor it. And then, recognize that the service and sacrifice that these 58,318 made is a tremendous service and sacrifice that we have for the freedoms we have today. We are now ready to begin our opening ceremony of the Wall That Heals. My name is Dave Edwards and today we will begin this ceremony with the presentation and posting of the colors, the national anthem, and an invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the Paint Valley Cadet Corps out of Bainbridge, Ohio, presents and posts the colors, and Section 8 of Ohio University performs the National Anthem. Now, please help me welcome Mr. Dick Greenstead, Albany VFW Post 9893, to deliver our invocation. Let's pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, we gather here today to remember and honor the 58,318 brave men and eight dedicated women who gave the ultimate sacrifice in the service to our country during the Vietnam War. Let us always honor the memory of those brave men who sacrificed so much that we may experience freedom in a country that is free. Comfort their families and loved ones who have to live on in their daily lives with having only the memories of those brave souls. And may we never fail to remember the huge cost of the freedoms for which we today enjoy. We ask for all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Director Tanzel, Mayor Patterson, President Nellis, Representative Edwards, Judge McCarthy, veterans and distinguished guests, welcome to Ohio University and the wall that heals. It is my honor to act as your MC this afternoon. Our first speaker today is Director Chip Tanzel of the Ohio Department of Veterans Services. Governor John R. Kasich appointed Colonel Chip Tanzel to lead the Ohio Department of Veterans Services on September 21st, 2015. Prior to being appointed director of the Ohio Department of Veterans Services, he was deployed to the Persian Gulf in 1990, and later on in his career, he was named Chief of Staff for the Ohio National Guard in 2011. Dave, thanks for the introduction. Thanks to all the organizers of this great event and for inviting me to participate. It is my honor to do so. Being here in Athens stirs up many memories and emotions for me. I've made the trip from Columbus many times while my daughter attended Ohio University. In fact, this is my first visit to the campus since she graduated last year. Every time I set foot on this campus, I can't help feel the vibrant energy from students and the community, full of ambition, hope, and curiosity. But today in particular, seeing the crowd, the flags, the stage, I can't help but compare it to the settings in Athens and around the nation that may have looked so much different from bird's eye view 50 years ago. However, instead of celebrating those who put our country before their own safety, as we are here today to do, the gatherings harbored hostility and anger. I note this difficult time in our communities to be able to point to how far we have come. For anyone who stood on these lawns in the streets during the Vietnam War, whether with a sign in protest or in uniform. You know the immense importance of all of us assembling here for a united mission. A mission to show respect and gratitude to every man and woman who answered the call to duty. To mourn those who did not return and to honor the immeasurable sacrifices that each soldier makes. As a combat veteran myself, I know these sacrifices. However, my experience during Desert Storm was extremely different from that of the service of the men and women who came before me. The Vietnam War changed how our military uses force and engages in conflict. It changed the public's understanding of how the armed forces are called into service. The war I served in and those that have happened since have been drastically impacted by what we have learned as a country from the difficult time. There's another shift since that era that I have witnessed in my travels across the state. It's a shift in how Vietnam veterans see themselves and how they serve their fellow veterans. Though this generation of veteran often received little to no homecoming celebration, sometimes facing increased difficulty and transitioning to civilian life because of public perception of their service. I continue to be struck by their ongoing sense of duty to be allies for other veterans those who served before them and those who have served after them. They rally together to take care of their own, whether that involves inviting someone who needs companionship over for dinner, giving a near stranger a ride to a medical appointment, or helping a neighbor's widow submit claims for benefits that they have earned, or bringing together hundreds of people to honor those who gave their all, which we see evident here today. The crowd I see before me offers gratitude and reverence. The crowd I see, veterans, families, students, community members, has come with open hearts and minds to an opportunity to reflect, mourn, seek closure, connect and heal. Though the wounds that each individual brings may be apparent or invisible, it is a chance to experience a reconciliation 
decades in the making. I'm grateful to those who invested themselves in making this occasion possible here in Athens. And to all of you who have chosen to participate, bring your memories, your empathy, and your passion to share with those around you. To our Vietnam veterans here today, I say this, welcome home and thank you for your service. Director Tanzel, thank you for those remarks and all that you have done and continue to do for our Ohio veterans. Our next speaker is Dr. Dwayne Nellis, President of Ohio University. Dr. Nellis assumed the role of Ohio University President on June 12th of this year. One of Dr. Nellis's first office visits was to our Veteran Center where he voiced his commitment to serving our veteran population. As an internationally recognized scholar and national higher education leader, Dr. Nellis brings nearly four decades of experience in academia as a president, provost, dean, and professor to Ohio University. Prior to arriving at Ohio, Dr. Nellis was president of Texas Tech University from 2013 to 2016. While at Texas Tech, Dr. Nellis was committed to enhancing the university's presence as a top-tier national public research university. He led Texas Tech to designation as a Carnegie Highest Research Activity National Research University. He is recognized nationally and internationally for his research that utilizes satellite data and geographic information systems to analyze various dimensions of the Earth's land surface. This research has been funded by more than 50 sources, such as NASA, the National Geographic Society, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome President Dwayne Nellis. Well, thank you, Dave, and it truly is a pleasure to be with all of you today to our distinguished guests, and all of you are distinguished in your commitment to our military. Uh, we certainly want that message to be front and center, always the uh, importance of our military and what they've done to protect our freedoms. Uh, Dave, as you said, uh, one of my first stops after becoming president on June 12th was at the Baker University Center, room 350. That's where Brigadier General James M. Abram and Colonel Arlene F. Greenfield Veterans and Military Student Services Center is located. I wanted to get that out again. I was so pleased to be there to hear the many ways that our university is assisting our military-affiliated students Provided, providing academic advising, filing educational benefit requests, identifying post-education employment opportunities. We truly want all of our students to succeed, but of course, many times our military-affiliated students have certain special additional information that they need and they need support on. We want to be there for them. We want them to be here at Ohio University and we want them to have a great experience here and be supported. So I thank Dave and all of his staff at the Veterans Center for doing, for what they do in providing assistance uh, to our students. <laughs> this is a proud day for Ohio University, the city of Athens, and the entire southeastern Ohio region. And it's my honor to stand before you today as we gather to remember the brave men and women whose names appear on this wall behind us that we can see through the window, and to honor those American heroes who've also paid the ultimate sacrifice before and since Vietnam. My brother-in-law, George Zook, was a Vietnam veteran, uh, served in the infantry, Army infantry. He had three Purple Hearts. His experience in Vietnam was one, he served proudly, he provided his service, and he carried a lot of his experiences with him the rest of his life. And he died at only 60 years old, in part from just dealing with some of the challenges that he had uh, after his service to our country but he was always so proud to be a Vietnam veteran. It was also a time I remember uh, finishing high school and going on to college during a time of unrest in our country and difficulties. And as was said earlier, a time when these veterans came back and many times they were, they were truly uh, mistreated and misrespected in our society. And we need to stand up and recognize the contributions that they've made in so many ways. I know many of you have traveled here today. Uh, some have seen the wall in Washington, D.C. I'm certainly one of those, and I had the, the honor and privilege to be there with my brother-in-law the first time that he saw the Vietnam Memorial, and it was very moving for him. But for many of you, 
this will be, this is the closest you've come so far in your lives to the Vietnam Memorial. But I hope someday you'll experience the real thing in Washington, D.C., what it means to those families, the remembrance of those individuals. It's truly hum humbling. More than 58,000 names, and every one of those names tied to a life, a family, a future that is gone. It's so important that we memorialize and remember them, that they're not truly gone, that their memories will forever be recognized through this wall that we memorialize these heroes and remind ourselves and our children of the true cost of being in a free nation. Some of you already know this, some of you don't. The wall in our nation's capital, the wall that draws an estimated 5.6 million people each year, the wall that brings people to their knees, brings others to tears, that big, beautiful wall was designed by none other than an Athens, Ohio native. Maya Lin, who studied here even during her high school days computer programming. She went on to do her college education at another institution, but we're very proud that she grew up in this community. Her parents both worked here. She's an internationally recognized artist and architectural designer who also designed this very space where the wall sits in front of. This, there's a sculpture out behind the wall input uh, that she created and uh, reflects on her and her brother's experiences too. If you go to the wall and look at it carefully, the wall behind the Vietnam Memorial Wall here, you'll see uh, different phrases of her remembrances of their time here in Athens. I had the privilege of meeting Maya Lin uh, about two months ago here uh, on this uh, Bicentennial Park. And she's an amazing, creative person with a wonderful spirit and very proud of what she contributed to our nation through the Vietnam Memorial. I must admit, too, that my heart has been very heavy the last few days, all week, really, uh, as members of our Bobcat family serving in the active military have weighed heavily on my mind. Late last week, we learned that some of our students, faculty, and staff who serve as members of the National Guard and Reserve were put on notice that they may be needed to, uh, and be called up uh, to respond to our hurricane-ravaged neighbors to the south. Our administration has vowed to do all we can to keep those students and our faculty and staff affected on track in their respective areas, whether it's their job or their academic program. And Interim Provost de Skutner and I sent out an email expressing that commitment, and I certainly wish we could do more. Then on Monday, uh, my wife Ruthie, who's here today with me, we participated in the seventh annual 9-11 Interfaith Peace Walk, where I joined people of all faiths and ethnicities to walk in solidarity as we remembered the nearly 3,000 souls who perished in 2001. It was an inspiring display and an uplifting moment as we collectively faced a reminder of our country's darkest days. And that leads us to this moment here. The purpose of today's ceremony is not only to honor our Vietnam veterans who paid the ultimate sacrifice, but also to recognize our Vietnam veterans who are still with us. And I would like all of our Vietnam veterans who are with us today, if you would please stand and let's, or if you're mem our family members of Vietnam veterans, if you'd please stand as well, and let's give them a round of applause, our Vietnam veterans and their family members. Thank you for being here today. And for all that have served our country in the military, and I know Senator Hoagland, I, we, he and I have talked about his special services in the Navy SEALs, but many others that uh, we have uh, here in the front row to uh, our veterans uh, and throughout the audience. We have currently serving military members as well. We thank you for your service to our country. So again, we appreciate your sacrifice to our country and we honor you. We're so honored to be in your presence today. You are truly heroes to all of us, so thank you again for your service. It's undeniable how vital our military has been to our nation's preservation. This wall brings awareness to that very fact. It educates the next generation and reminds those of us who've not, that, uh, that we've not forgotten. We are honored to have been recognized as a military-friendly institution as well, and I'm very proud of that. La the last six years in a row, we've been recognized as one of the 
most military-friendly campuses in the United States, and I think that's something we should be very, very proud of. This is an honor limited to the top 15% of universities in the United States. But the work continues, and there's always room for improvement, and we're all committed to that. Continuing those conversations with the Veterans Center and our military-affiliated students, faculty, and staff in the coming months, because I'm resolved in my commitment to support those men and women who serve or, or who have served uh, in uniform. The wounds of war are seldom quick to heal. Even today, more than 40 years after the Vietnam War's end, the wounds are still felt by many of us. This wall can help heal those wounds, maybe not completely, but it does possess the power to heal at some level. And this is how our country uses its past, to move us forward rather than holding us back. This wall truly can help us heal. Thank you again for being here today, and thank you for your commitment to our military. Thank you for the opportunity to, to help us celebrate having the Vietnam Memorial here as we remember all those who, who lost their lives in that conflict. And I really appreciate your commitment to our military. Thank you very much. President Nellis, thank you for your remarks and your support of veterans at Ohio University. Next, we would like to welcome Mayor Steve Patterson. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Now that President Nellis and uh, Director Tansel, they, they clearly saw all my remarks, so I have nothing left to say. It's interesting, in my doing some research on uh, the wall that heals, the wall that heals has been to over 400 cities across the United States. It made a long haul to get here, to Athens today. It came from Kalispell, Montana, where it was there for three days and is now here. And after leaving here, it will be migrating on north up to Grand Rapids, Michigan. It has quite, quite an agenda in terms of getting out to communities and helping all veterans heal, Vietnam veterans and veterans in general to heal. It is kind of sad to mention that uh, all of us that have been tracking the series of storms, hurricanes going through from Harvey to Irene, uh, which is really great that she's kind of given us a little bit of a reprieve today. But uh, they did have to cancel two of their visits, the one to Houston and the one to Galveston. Um, and our hearts go out to those folks as they dig out from under the travesty that's taken place there. And unfortunately, at this point in time, we'll not get to experience the wall. The purpose for the, the traveling wall is to help millions heal. You know, the Vietnam Memorial stands as a symbol of America's honor and recognition to the men and women who served and sacrificed their lives in the Vietnam War. The memorial is dedicated to honor and courage, the sacrifice and the devotion of the military members uh, on duty who served our country and who answered the call to service. There are more than 58,000 names that are on that wall standing before us outside. As was mentioned by President Nellis, it makes my heart sore to look out and see so many young individuals out there touring that wall right now as opposed to the Vietnam conflict being a chapter in a history book. They are out there getting to see it for themselves and recognize the service that our country put forward to help put down a conflict. On the wall itself, are those 58,000 names, and everyone has a story. I want to share with you that in Athens County, there are 18 names on that wall from Athens County. Eight of them were from Athens, and I'm going to read them. Army, Army Corporal Virgil L. Castle, 20 years old. Army Specialist 4, Dennis K. Erdos, 22. Army Private Lowell R. Groves, 19. Army Private... Philip R. Looney, 24. Army Corporal Frank H. Miller, Jr., 19. Army Corporal Finley A. Rice, 19. Marine Lance Corporal Larry E. Spaulding, 21. And Army First Lieutenant Joseph A. Bodner, 22. A brief little story about Lieutenant Bodner. His parents were Hungarian refugees right after World War II who immigrated here to the United States. Lieutenant Joseph Bodner's mother was a cook here at Ohio University. That said, of those eight members and the 18 from Athens County and the 84,000 plus that served and lost their lives, for the eight that I just listed, I want you to think about this for a minute. This wall, in a lot of ways, has brought them home. I too want to thank all the veterans that are here today 
both Vietnam veterans and their families. Um, some of you whom I know in, the, your, in what your service has meant to you in the Vietnam conflict. I also want to acknowledge and give great thanks and praise and I salute you to all the other veterans in the room, also active duty members who are serving, whether you're active or you're a reservist or you're a guardsman, know this, you are important to the fabric of our country. You are the ones who are called to serve and you're the ones who stepped up and said, yes, I will serve my country in whatever way I need to, even if it means paying the ultimate sacrifice as the names that are on this wall out here did for us during the Vietnam War. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, for your service and your continued support of veterans in the Athens community. As Mayor Patterson said, we have 18 uh, individuals from Athens County, but we also have 76 veterans' names that are on the wall that are not only Athens County, but the counties that surround Athens. And uh, we have placed 76 flags in front of the wall to recognize those heroes. What we want you to do is at the conclusion of today's ceremony, we have additional flags. If you would like to find a loved one, a friend, a comrade that is on the wall, place it at that panel. Please do so. Uh, there are some memorabilia from the Vietnam area that is there, and we also have three six-foot uh, screens that are showing those individuals that are around this area that have perished, and it will have a little bit of bios on each of them. Once again, we would like to thank everyone for coming, and we'll be ending today's ceremony with a benediction from Mr. Tom Smith of Athens AMVETS Post 76, followed by the Ohio University alma mater performed by Section 8. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the benediction and the singing of our alma mater. Please bow your heads for the benediction. Gracious Lord, we are grateful for those who have given up their time and talents to bring the healing walls here to Athens, Ohio, where so many veterans and their families will be able to share in the healing process that this wall represents. We ask, Lord, that you would lead those veterans or family members who may not have been able to face or cope with the struggles or af aftermath of that conflict to a personal courage to face the wall and let go of the bonds that may bind them still today. We pray this wall becomes a soothing comfort to their hearts and souls as they reconnect with the past to ensure a meaningful future. Lord, may you guide us, strengthen us, and bless us through our contact with the wall that heals. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. United States Air Force from 1978 to 1982. Got out as a buck sergeant. Did you did you come in on a motorcycle today? I did. Yes, I'm riding a 2003 Harley Davidson Heritage Softail Classic that I've put 99,000 miles on in the last seven years. 
I like to ride. Where are you from? I'm from down in Meigs County, near Racine. How does it feel to be a part of this experience today? <laughs> it, uh, it brings tears to my eyes because real men and women died so we can make this happen right, right here and to have the freedom to even stand here and do what I'm doing today. It's, uh, it's difficult for me to express it sometimes. I get emotional. Thank you, Angela. Um, what are you taking away from today's event and what do you hope people take away from their visit to this wall? That we still need real men and women to fight for our country today as we did back then. And I would do this again in a heartbeat because we live in the greatest country in the world and the only way it's gonna stay that way is if real men and women are willing to stand up for our freedoms and for what our flag means in the United States of America and this country. Praise God. Great interview, Jim. Thank you. Thank Such you, Angela. To meet you. We usually don't get out of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Name's Lester Adkins, L-E-S-T-E-R-A-D-K-I-N-S. -E Originally from Portsmouth, Ohio. Joined the Army in 1981, retired in 2005. So Lester, tell me why you're here today and what you're doing today. I was given the privilege of hauling the wall that heals from Missoula, Montana down to Ohio, bringing our fallen brothers and sisters home. Well, I hope other people take away from it that these guys sacrificed when, you know, when they really didn't have to, but when their country told them they needed to go, they went and they never got the thanks that we did when we got back from the Gulf War. Could you tell me a little bit about your military service? Uh, I was in uh, Kuwait 91. I was stationed in Germany at the time. We got deployed from there to Kuwait for uh, Operation Positive Force during the temporary ceasefire in Kuwait. And then uh, I went back in 2004 with the Kentucky National Guard, and we done. Uh, we stayed there for a year, driving uh, equipment in and out of Iraq. And I retired in July of 2005. And how does it feel to be a part of this? It's uh, intoxicating, and sombering. Right. Oh, my name is Claire Lapani. It's C L A I R E, and then my last name is L I P A N I. But I think you're going to want it facing. Uh, Claire, what year are you here at Ohio? I'm a sophomore. Tell me why you're here today. Today we're here to help put up the wall that heals, which has all the names of um, remembered, remembering Vietnam vets on them to honor them. Where are you from, Claire? I'm from Andover, Ohio. It's kind of close to Youngstown. <laughs> How does it feel to be a part of this? Um, it's, it's just a great opportunity to know that I get to, to help um, people remember all the sacrifices people made and, and their journeys to doing that. Okay, so mainly what I, what I hope to take away from today is just the impact of the sacrifices that all those soldiers made during the time of the war. And I also think it's really important and really impressive that this entire wall travels. So it gives um, everybody a chance that may not be able to travel to like a um, a permanent memorial to see these things. So I, I would hope that other people would take away the, the, the honor that they get from getting to, to see these names today. Well, you were nervous, but you did great. Yeah, you did awesome. <laughs> Thank you. you. Great. All right. My name is Andrew Price, A-N-D-R-E-W-P-R-I-C-E. -E. And tell me about uh, who you're with and why you're here today. Uh, today I'm with OU Army ROTC and we are here to help the construction of this wall. I am a senior at Ohio University. Where are you from, Andrew? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. How does it feel to be a part of this today? Uh, it feels absolutely amazing. feels like I'm doing my part and making sure that the guys I knew are doing their part, help serve the community and make this a really positive event for everyone. What are you taking away from today's event? 
I'm just taking away a sense of remembrance on how this was this was a super traumatic event in our history, and it feels good just to, for us to come together and just help remember, get together, and heal as a community. What do you hope people who visit this wall take away from that experience? I, I just hope they take away from it the sacrifices that our men and women in uniform during the Vietnam War did for our country. And certainly passing by it, they can realize that our nation, our nation was put a little bit more safer because of the sacrifices of others. And that they'll be, and that they'll be able to pass by and say, okay, they did their part, now it's time for me to do my part.